here at Victoria Hospital at London Health Sciences Centre, we treat approximately 350 patients a year with aortic aneurysms. Aneurysms of the aorta are a life-threatening disease because aneurysms can rupture, and if an aneurysm of the aorta ruptures, the patient dies. So therefore, the treatment, we intend to treat the patients when an aneurysm becomes of a size or large enough that the potential for rupture is significant. When we initially started, we were only doing maybe 10 or 12 endovascular aneurysm repairs a year for the first couple of years. We now treat approximately 70% of our patients with the endovascular technique. Um, so we do approximately 160 to 200 endovascular aortic aneurysm repairs a year. The risks to the patient are much, are much less. The perioperative mortality is much less. So the higher risk patient will withstand this procedure much better than the standard operation. So we take a high risk patient and with this procedure, they can have their aneurysm treated with a perioperative mortality rate of only about 1% or less as opposed to 10% with the standard operation. So it's a, it's a technology, a method of treating aortic aneurysms that not only decreases the patient's hospital stay, but more importantly, improves their chances of survival, improves their chance of surviving the surgery, and therefore is a, is a method of treating aortic aneurysms that has actually saved lives. So it's a, if you like, a minimally invasive procedure, a new innovation in surgical management that has actually saved lives, not just decreased post-operative recovery and decreased post-operative pain. We deal with patients with a variety of vascular diseases, including abdominal aortic aneurysms, as well as peripheral vascular disease. One is the traditional open surgical repair, which requires not only a large incision down the midline of the patient's abdomen, but comes with it a lot of physiologic stress from a major intra-abdominal procedure. Uh, the incision that we would normally make to do that operation, you can see here, and it is a long incision from just below the rib cage all the way down to the pubic bone. In contradistinction to that, the endovascular repair or less invasive approach requires much smaller incisions but more importantly also a lot less physiologic stress on the patient. The incisions that we would use to perform an endovascular repair, which is what we're going to do today, are quite small and you can see them here in the groin on either side. As we look around the operating room that we're working in today, you can see some of the equipment that we use. Uh, this device here is the fluoroscopy unit that allows us to provide x-rays during endovascular repair. It's approximately 15 years old now and it is uh, wheeled in and out of the operating room when we need it. Next to it you can see the TV screen that we use to capture our images and also give us live feedback as we place the endovascular devices. And as you can see, uh, this is a multidisciplinary approach and a team approach to this type of surgery is obviously critical in providing the best outcomes for our patients. The current advances in, in minimally invasive vascular surgery have been, have been possible because of a portable CRM technology, which has some limitations. It has some limitations in certain areas of the body. It works better in some areas than the other. It has limitations with respect to how long it will work, and has limitations with respect to quality of the images. The newer technology that with, with the generosity of the donors was, which will allow us to obtain um, gives much clearer pictures head to toe so there's no limitations with respect to body area that can be treated or disease processes that can be treated and the quality of the imaging is a is hundred times better than the portable imaging equipment such that the imaging is better than what our naked eyes would see. With money comes infrastructure, comes equipment and the ability to treat our patients better. It's a huge step forward based on what our imaging equipment is right now. And that has direct patient care implications, has huge research and educational potential as well. <laughs>